Back in 2009, the iPhone 3GS was paving the road for what a modern smartphone is today. Alongside other smartphones of that era, you can clearly see that Apple knew where the industry was heading. I thought it would be a nice challenge to see if the iPhone 3GS I picked up for $30 could replace my current smartphone, the LG G6, which is a really nice handset. The first thing that really caught my attention is just how small the 3GS is. The screen is a 3.5 inch capacitive display with a resolution of 320 by 480. The unit I have has definitely seen better days. The previous owner definitely used it very, very heavily and as such, the lock and mute buttons no longer function. Luckily, you can get around this with iOS's touch assist controls. The 3GS can run up to iOS 6.1.6. .6. This means that you can still use a lot of older versions of apps like Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Gmail, Google Chrome, and so on. Even games like Minecraft do actually run on this eight-year-old mobile hardware. Sadly, some apps that are able to be downloaded don't actually work. Performance overall is passable. It can be quite sluggish at times, but I never had any problems with video playback. Apple supported the 3GS with software updates up until the last release of iOS 6.1.6 .6 in February of 2014. That's nearly five years worth of updates. That support did come at a price though. The base model 16GB iPhone 3GS retailed at $879 here in Australia, with the 32GB version coming in at a high $1,040. If you really wanted to get that touchscreen experience at a lower price, there was the iPod Touch. In 2009, you could get a second generation 8GB one for $268. These had slightly weaker specs than the iPhone 3GS, but were more powerful than the iPhone 3G, which was still an expensive phone at the time. Of course, you are giving up the camera and the ability to make calls and use cellular connectivity. Connecting the phone to iTunes was super easy, and the 16GB of internal storage was more than enough to store music and a few apps. Around the back is the 3 megapixel f2.8 camera, which features autofocus and 480p video support. The photos it took were pretty bad, although that could be due to the scratched lens cover however. Video quality was also very average, but if my life depended on it, I could use this camera. Surprisingly enough, battery life was okay. Considering the phone's age, I was surprised it could get through a normal day of use. The 3GS is packing a 1220 mAh battery, way smaller than anything on any modern smartphones today. So, what would a smartphone be if it couldn't make calls? Well, not a very good smartphone. Luckily, the 3GS worked fine with my modern 4G SIM card. Making calls and sending texts was super easy, and apparently I sounded fine on the other person's end. It has been many years since I've heard that default ringtone. So, what can't the 3GS do that modern smartphones like my LG G6 can? Well, the 3GS doesn't have a fingerprint reader, waterproofing, fast charging, wireless charging, or even a front-facing camera. But, you know what? It still soldiers on an impressive eight years after its initial release. If this was the only smartphone I owned, I could definitely get by using it. However, I'm sticking with the G6. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos in the near future. Have a nice day, my name's Nathan, feel free to follow me on Twitter and I'll see you next time.